Okay, great. So now the recording has started. And so, so the usually just on Mondays uh, for this week, of course, for week zero, there's only gonna be this one. But uh, if we go, you know, for those who continue like um, the, the actual training from week one to week 12, there will be always the challenge description or challenge going through on Monday this time. And so basically the whole purpose is to make sure that everyone understands early what is required, the challenge document basically, okay? So I would be really encouraging, most of the time I will not start by um, explaining, but asking you what, what have you understood. And therefore if I hear more than you know three, uh, of people explaining what they understood, that means they have described it in their own way, then I will understand you know, what is missing. If there are any misconceptions or misunderstandings, I'll be able to correct. So I will do the same this one as well. So whoever has read the challenge document, if you can um, uh, basically put your hand up and then I will call you just to explain quickly what you understood. What are the tasks of this week? Um, and then we can continue. So anyone? So what have you understood? It's all about just tell me like, you know, how much you have understood. Even if it's, uh, you know, I don't expect, even if you don't understand it much, it's fine. Just whatever from just a quick look you had, what have you understood? What is expected? You know, what is the challenge about? Okay, Abdurrahman. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Abdurrahman. Hi. Hi. Uh, uh, I think the challenge is to uh, understand what uh, uh, previous uh, cohort uh, doing. Uh, their message and uh, uh, something like that. Uh, we can extract uh, some knowledge or insight from it. Or who is uh, the most uh, engaging in the community, for example? Uh, who is sent most messages and something like that. That's what uh, come in my mind. Um, it seems it's a, go a good thing. It seems like that was from the previous batch, not this batch. The week, the challenge for this week is very different, but that was from the, so I'm asking just maybe Rodas what is shared. Maybe it's wrongly, uh, the link that is shared maybe is wrong. So let me just confirm. Is that the same document everyone got, or is this the one that I am projecting? Uh, you mean the global news data set? Yeah, so that is the project. So the other one is, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so then it seems there is, yeah, well, okay. So who wants to tell me about this one, or who was read the current challenge? So Abdulrahman, the other, that one is not the challenge document. I think this used to be the one from the previous batch, but the this court's um, challenge document is about the global media. So who wants to describe what they have understood? Um, if, you, if you may allow me. Yeah, Joseph. Uh, yes, um, so... Uh, the problems the context of the pro the context of the project um, uh, surrounds uh, global news uh, data set uh, whereby we have maybe the BBC and then maybe different uh, news providers uh, on the traffic and uh, on the traffic of the news feed also on the domains that they use and the locations of where these domains are so the context is um, focusing on uh, a news, a news industry, or uh, rather media industry. Um, now the problem statement comes 
uh, whereby it's not really defined in the in the document, but the problem statement is now to analyze or rather uh, go through this data and uh, understand uh, certain aspects about the data and uh, answer the minimum essentials um, to like look at the correlation between uh, the data channels, uh, rather the data traffic, uh, and do more and perform an EDA analysis on questions like websites that have the largest counts on news articles, uh, websites with the highest number of visitors traffic. Yeah, so that's what I understand from the from the uh, assessment. Uh, it just requires us to carry out some EDA analysis. Um, that's just task one. Uh, then for the rest of the days we carry out more complex EDA. Thanks, Joseph. That's what I want, just, you know, how much you understood. So, yeah, anyone else? Anyone else can... Anyone else in their own, you know, the, the advantage is that it will help me to learn in your own terminologies, in your own understanding, you know, what have you picked up from the document so that I can add more instead of just repeating um, what is easy to understand. Anyone else? Just one more and then I will continue. Johannes? Uh, maybe one more, one more thing to add about the challenges that today's focus is going to be on the Python environment setup and GitHub in CICD. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Johannes. And anyone else just want to go or just? It's almost always very advantageous if you speak. You know, you have to know this is, you know, you, this is not school or this is not class. This is work environment. So, you know, be noticed, contribute. Even if your understanding is, you know, you're not confident in your understanding, it's not about being confident, it's about tasting it. Just out of um, very just expectation to tell you is that more people want to speak, but we don't have time, therefore I will say, okay, let's continue. I am expecting more like that than people being silent. Okay, Abu Bakr or uh, Abu Bakr. Yeah. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Okay, so uh, the challenge is on uh, the generative AI, ML, ML engineering, and there are plenty of tasks that simulate real world tasks uh, which are suitable for us. And uh, there are different tasks such as like setting up GitHub, Python, and for data pro processing, like uh, as colleague said. Uh, on uh, a news data that actually we, we are going to process. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks everyone who spoke. Um, so yes, I think in part the general picture is highlighted and it is correct. So we are processing a data and it is not, you know, I, I, I must say it is not simulation. This is the, the challenge itself, even if it's week zero, we put it out because we want to know about it. It is exactly, if you were working for me, I would still give you this challenge um, in the way it is, right? It is not about just simulating and learning. It's not just only learning, because I think as uh, you will be seeing here, it is about just this, this part, okay? So we don't want, and also the principles I, I, I spoke earlier, we don't want just on use to spend any time, even if it's a learning time, just on something learning, like let's say on Titanic data. We will not give you a Titanic data or something that others has already explored. I, you know, if you want to learn on that, you should go and learn it. Here, you're going to be doing something that is relevant that, that has not been answered. Okay. And then the answer or whatever result you get. It is still exciting to anyone, or at least to the company that gave that challenge. So in this case, I am interested to understand influence of, you know, the, how news medias are influencing each other, 
as well as also how they are, you know, what are the topics that correlations between the topics in different news medias, how is their reporting, you know, is uh, kind of correlates with each other, who is breaking the news first, you know, and what topics people discuss or what topics become a news and what are the, the headlines, keywords, are they correlated between different media? So it's not really, you know, whatever you're developing, it's still relevant. You can blog about it, you can share it in your social media, and it is relevant. So it is not only a simulation, it actually has value. And that is essential to everything that we give you. There is something somebody is looking for to, you know, um, to understand. So this is, you have to know, this is not a training like what you know. It is, that's why it's also slightly different from a, a boot camp. It is not about skill only, it's about providing value because only people who provide value are hired as far as we understand. So people don't hire for a skill, but they hire somebody with that skill provide value. So for that reason, we actually getting a result out of it is a value and that can be shared and it's still exciting. Uh, you can share it with anyone. You learn something, we learn something. In this case, ask the week zero challenge us in particular me i am interested about this topic so i'm you know the the result you get will provide me some result right some value so i would also be able to understand your performance in that in that regard so that by i am more talking about the team the Tena academy um training team okay so yes this week's challenge is about you know exploring uh, the sentiment topic and event of news is almost around 50 to 100,000 um, news uh, articles that are collected from a number of global medias. They are distributed across the world and the topics content themselves, actually the reporting is also up for all the, the, you know, basically it covers everything from Africa to Europe, every other continent, it is also represented. So it is that data and you are going to be analyzing it to first the EDA component and second actually the machine learning modeling and and component as well so um so that is the the kind of the heart of the problem it's about the news media there are three data I will, I will describe but i think i want you to really focus on this one and in particular because even if you make it or not to week one you know week one is not it's not an exam it's just more like do you have the required, because this challenge has the complexity we require. So some performance in this is relevant for us to know whether you will make it to the job like in 12 weeks or not. Because if it was a one year or two years program, everyone will make it. But this is a very particular training. It's only three months of technical training and three months of job search, job hunt. So we have to filter um, people based on their readiness. So, you know, their the prerequisites. But even if you don't make it, just doing this week zero alone will provide you enough learning, enough understanding of what is required. So that's why we call it, it's a win-win. Week zero is a win-win situation. That means however, if you put your efforts, your hard work, it will not be wasted. Even if you don't make it to week one, you will be proud of it. You will be sharing it, you will be talking about it. It will be part of your portfolio. So it's really make sure that is the case. And on top of that, we also know that the number of tasks that we have here is a lot. So that means you might not be able to, and I, I used to have it may, but now I am putting it will not, but it's just, you know, surprise me if you can finish it. But this, the tasks are so much that you will not have time to, you know, to complete as well as, and in particular, you will not have time to build intuition or to be comfortable with the new concepts and skills you are exposed in this week's challenge. That means there's so much challenge, there's so much skill, there's so much knowledge, and there's so much uh, kind of attitude you will be exposed, and you might not understand all in depth. So, and you will not understand it in depth. Just follow, trust, and go, okay? Because you will build, this thing repeats again, and it, it will sink as, as time goes on. And also note that, exactly building a deeper understanding is not the purpose of this week's project and also we know and i i said it earlier we know you will be confused you will be overwhelmed and it is expected it's how you handle that overwhelm and and confusion is one one part of the challenge okay 
So it's a it's a much uh, you know much more than we give you any feedback. You will give to yourself feedback a lot, and you have to silence yourself saying, "Okay, just give up. This is not for you." Make sure to go at, up until the end. Okay. With that, I think the most the last important word for me is just persist. Okay. And just by persist, it's not just only stay there silent and persist, but really be proactive, get the best out of it, ask questions, provide resources, share, and within and persist. Even if you are not, you're confused technically, you are, you can contribute and make sure to do that. Okay. So that is really key and don't forget it. And if you really are confused, just come back and read this one. Then we have what is the data? The data is actually from the global news data set. It is actually around uh, September, October, or October, November um, uh, time, 2023. But you can go, once you do this project, you can actually do the same thing for the latest news as well. So you could do actually in principle. So, but this one is an, an interesting time, you know, from the Ukraine, Russia type, there was a lot of like this the offensive, you know, it's kind of this, the failed attempt to break through uh, from Ukraine side from the, um, you know, the, the other news, especially on the Middle East, there is there has been a lot of going on. And the US and China, there is a lot. About Africa, there has been a lot as well. So, you know, much more of the West Africa or the Sudan crisis or, you know, many things are represented. So there's an interesting phenomena that is in there in this data. And the data is actually it's about global news so you will you will you will when you analyze you will know better about it than me but it has this the authors the source name the source id article id but then the important parts are the descriptions as well as the published ads because it's important for the time series you have to chronologically do and the content of it that is uh, max to 100 to 200 character as well as the whole article um, represented and then also the title sentiment is provided. So that is, so you can analyze it actually there as well. Just, um, but if you want to do more modeling of, as we require more on the actual content, you can also do sentiment analysis on the content and the data is provided there. But another important data that we provide is also because, you know, the sites, you know, this could be bbc.com or, you know, aljazeera.com or you know some other um, um, uh, dot com dot org dot something so we want to actually understand in the article the category actually this is the search so it's actually um, maybe it's wrong i will update and you will update the category here is actually the country um category that means to what to which country this this article is reported. So where is the event happening? Not the news media is located, but if it is about talking, for example, about Palestine, then it is the country, the category is defined as Palestine, right? So, or if it is about Ethiopia, then the category is Ethiopia. So the category of the country, the article is about. So it's more about to, to which, about which country this is talking about. And the domain's location is, now, you you know some are, some news media are global. Like BBC.com is you know you can find BBC.com, BBC.us, BBC. something. But the important part is we want to know the headquarter of the domain holder, and that location data is here because that's also important. Because you see, if some if a, a, a news is located in Ethiopia, they most likely report about Ethiopia firsthand. But then about let's say um uh ukraine maybe just from you know copy from or another news so you will be able to know those elements so this is that actually the headquarter of the company that owns the domain and this is just the source common name location and country okay and then another data which is also very relevant because later when you do eda and others it's important to know how much if you want to model how much how many people read that news you know that is already that is given only by the traffic the number of visitors of that site monthly or yearly or daily right so that data is provided in this in this data so you have now enough data to really answer any interesting question you know correlation by traffic or country or 
or domain. Okay, so this is why this is, and the data is large and is really don't push it to the GitHub because then you will struggle. Git, you know, when you whenever you commit or update your Git, you would be really struggling if you push the data there. And so don't push the data there. Add a dot git ignore and then exclude the data there. Okay. Instead, learn about data versioning. So there is um, we will we will provide a, pro, a, a tutorial about data versioning that you can version your data locally or in a Google Drive or other place. So ensure compliance. In this case, you know, just you should read almost always wherever the data, where is the data coming from, and what is the data privacy and confidentiality. So just even if even if it's not, but read read about that, learn about that, so that that is a professionalism that we are talking about. Even if now the data that we provide you in the public domain, so whatever news you have, you can share it. But some data we will give you, for example, in other weeks, week one and others, they are sometimes coming a proprietary data. So you will not be able to share it uh, with anyone else except present to us. OK, so I think the guidance is already said. The topics covered, a lot of topics are covered. That's why you are not going to be able to cover maybe every of them, but definitely about Python and a little bit of React JavaScript, GitHub commands, absolutely. You will be, uh, we are asking you also to write a little bit of about frameworks, processes, and workflows, in particular for EDA and others data modeling. Uh, we will use the CRISP DM methodology, at least introduce that. And, and then databases, at least, you know, SQL, you will be exposed and data understanding and exploration as part of, you know, EDA, CICD, basically this is the um, continuous integration, which is the GitHub, uh, and then CD, basically the GitHub action also uh, is considered if you are deploying it somewhere using, for example, GitHub actions, as well as also the GitHub actions is used for continuous integration, for example, for continuously running unit tests, integration tests and others are also there. So we just ask you to learn at least about it, the vocabulary of it, what it means and you know what does that mean. And then there is also MLOps process. This is just like the DevOps, but in this case, how you know in the DevOps sense, normally what we have is uh, only code is version. You know, your code is version, your code is just people work together and therefore that's whatever is called uh, uh, DevOps. But in the MLOps or AIOps or you know these things, you have actually now data and model as one other component artifacts that you need to also version and and uh, collaborate with. So that's what's in the MLOps, in the modeling and web app development. Again, just that there are some frameworks that makes web app development easy, like Streamlit and and others. Uh, and then full stack development conceptually, you should just think of backend, frontend, database, and everything else. And then also deployment since you have to learn at least the vocabulary of what is a server and serverless deployment and what you know architectures and how you choose at least just get exposed to that okay i think again not overwhelm is expected and productivity is key and persistence is highly valued so here is a starter python code package again this was from past time and we didn't update it so it still is saying parse slack so you, we just gave you just to, so that you can learn about the structures. And if you want to use this starter pack package, you have to change it yourself. You know, get the some of the things that you you want, and some of the things maybe you don't want. You can delete. This is just only as a starter. And so you know, don't think it will work out of the box. It will not because it's on for another data, completely different structure of data. So, but just to describe how. Things are structured. You can see them. You can learn. You can have. You can mirror also your structure uh, like that, and you can learn what are in each component and why they are useful um, in that. So the work plan is the key, and this is basically what you know. Describe exactly what if you if you really are new and you don't know how to think, you can follow exactly what what is described here. You can exactly execute step by step, and you will get there. Okay, so this is just to simplify. Of course, it doesn't explicitly say do this, do that, do that, but it gives you an idea and you just, it will be enough to understand. If you have questions that you will ask in Slack and, and in the tutorials, then it will, it will help you. So in the first task, there are a couple of sections. And the first section is basically set up your environment. If you haven't already done, you know, have a VS code or some other editor that you want 
you know, make it make sure that you have everything, you know, you are comfortable and make sure and by now you must because we demanded also in the application process that you must have a Git account and therefore you have to create a Git uh, a repository to host, you know, that all the codes and every other relevant things other than the data uh, in that repository. And here, what we are requiring is that, of course, your dev environment setup, which we will we will see through your repository setup as well as also through you know what you will deliver screenshots. But this is just the dev environment setup and relevant skills in the area. For example, if you are very new to uh, Git, you your way of setting up maybe not easy, or you know you might not have more branches, or you might not have good um, commit messages, whatever. But this is basically just, these are our key performance indicators. And the other one is for every project, you have to have plan. Again, if you have experience already, Git, GitHub gives you project issues and others. So you can actually follow, you know, basically you can plan everything about your project in GitHub already using the projects um, uh, tab as well as the issues tab. So you can describe all of your tasks as issue and then plan it in your project uh, and then kind of execute as you as you commit and as you merge okay so that is what uh, the planning and the eda starts basically when it, when you are exploring the data you will be doing uh, based on a framework crisp pm you have to understand it it's, it's just more much more understanding nothing more but in that crisp pm you realize what is data preparation data understanding exploratory data analysis and all of that is kind of, of course, you need to have a statistical thinking. Um, and we measure that KPI, the KPI that means the key performance indicator or the evaluation that we will use uh, to evaluate your performance in that is proactive to self-learn and sharing references. This we will measure because we analyze every of the conversations, both your attendance through the automated analysis of Gmeet as well as also automated analysis of Slack. We know what you shared, you know, how much you shared, how many people liked your, you know, find it helpful, your references. All of these are basically, we are analyzing it. And then also the EDA techniques that you have based on your experience, based on your statistical understanding you did. And then also, of course, like your understanding uh, of suitable statistical distributions, plots for the relevant tasks, okay? So these are the two key components of task one. But in that, if you are still, again, confused where to start, whatever, follow the minimum essential to do. This is much more describing, do this, do that, right? In a slightly, uh, a bit more detail. So here, again, it tells you maybe just, uh, you know, create a repository and name it if you want as news correlation to NAC week zero. So this is kind of naming is important in any project. So having the common, you know, uh, naming is useful for you as you go on because people will see okay you 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 pay you have uh, attention to detail and then whenever you work start with task one you know a branch so in this case you can call it actually task one for day one or for the task part and then you you work on you know you work on that task and merge it with the main as you finish okay um and then um if you are using the starter code this is a description because the starter code you don't have to use it you can start yourself a new repository but if you're using it make sure you change everything that is the occurrence of slack by news maybe and then update codes function names and stuff for example for uh, uh, there is a class called slack data loader maybe change it into news data loader you know so maybe just use only the naming um but whatever is not relevant delete whatever is relevant but has a name difference just change it okay so this is what and the most important part of task one here then after setting up is the ED analysis. Remember, this at least is a guidance. If you do more, that's great. But try to do to, to at least in your EDA cover these topics. So basically, the first one is saying, who are the top and bottom 10 in terms of, for example, the first three, two are in terms of websites. You know, which websites are actually have the largest count of news articles. For this one, for example, you need to basically um, get the domain, the top domain of the news uh, media, and then, or also there is a cutout, there is uh, actually the news media, something in the data, um, there could be something called source, either it's by source ID or source name, this is basically 
the media name maybe that you will you will check group of by like that and count so simply you know just using um, pandas data frame doing that thing you learn more about it already and then websites with the highest number of visitors traffic again this one you 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 will use another data so you either you have to merge or also just on that uh, part alone and countries with the highest number of news media organizations represented by domains in the data this is again you have to merge for this for example the two data sets the actual news data and the location data um, and then countries that may have that may that have many articles written about them so this is now a, not then the location of news media but actually countries that are reported the highest in the in the data so distinguish this and then also this is an interesting one so websites the highest websites or the highest news medias that are reported again by the news content about africa us china eu russia ukraine middle east these are interesting as i said i'm interested about them so note that to do that for example you might not have Africa alone in the data. So you must average maybe the, all of the 52 countries in Africa, actually now 54 um, countries actually merge it together. So that means count them by aliasing, you know, kind of having continent maybe, um, adding a new column like that, and then averaging by continent in this case. The same is EU, and the same is probably Middle East. And then websites with the highest count of positive, neutral, and negative sentiment in the title. This is already because it's given to you so you can actually do some uh again by grouping by websites and then taking some kind of averaging so that basically for example compare the impact of using mean or um, mean or median because if you know the distribution of the you know if it's gaussian mean and median are the same but if it's not gaussian they are not the same so just you know by comparing uh the impact of these different statistics discrete statistics is important and also check the distribution of sentiment for a particular domain. So select the top domains, let, let's say by visitors traffic, and then check their distribution of sentiment. Because if they have 500 articles, for example, you know, how is their uh, news, the, the title, um, are the sentiments distributed? Is it Gaussian? Is it some other distribution, you know, binomial or something else? Okay. And so another one within this is compare the content metadata across sites. So this is basically, you know, how are, you know, are they average? Again, look at the distribution. I'm, I'm going to be asking uh, again here. So basically count the number of just the number of words uh, in the content and, you know, which which news and then take the average either median or average again and compare and which news article or which news media actually writes the longest or the shortest you know you will you will learn more about that as well and then how similar are the number of words in the title for example do some news media write short titles or long titles you know you can also look at the distribution check the distribution here as well So this will give you, <clears throat> and another one is, what is the impact of frequent news reporting and sentiment to the website's global ranking? Because you have now, you have done already by grouping, you know how many news they have reported and how, of course, if you want to do it even better, not only how much, you can also say the distribution. That means in time, are they, you know, publishing every day versus, you know, once in a while, once in a week? So by doing that, uh, you can also by the sentiment in the title, you know, kind of compare how that that impacts the global their global ranking. Are they top because they are reporting negative news a lot or not? You know, something like that. And for that, one of the suggestions is that you can do some 2D scatter plot um, with the ranking in one side and then uh, the average, the median sentiment being on the color. And then the total number of reports by the websites as the x-axis or y-axis so that's the one so this is eda it's not easy but you know you can hopefully try to get as much done and in task two you should be doing now you're you're going building 
uh, data science component, that means ML modeling. So up to that point, you didn't need to do model match, only just do some kind of, uh, you know, grouping or pandas uh, join and all that. But here you are required to do some kind of modeling. And for one, you can actually classify all the news, either breaking news, politics, world news, you know, this recommended. You can use another thing. And, and then you will do some topic modeling, sentiment analysis, and then predictive analysis and modeling, and network analysis. And so these ones are covered in a very vague way, but you can do more if you want to. Again, the KPIs are there. So the tasks here are very, you know, in the ML engineering part, you have to do, you have to understand as well as do feature store in the ML ops, the ML ops components, feature store, model versioning, and model monitoring, and then unit testing. CI implementation with GitHub Actions, dockerizations if you can, and then building Python package again um, uh, if you do. So as a minimum essential to do though, merge your day one branch you know, to the main branch so that you then now do the, your first uh, uh, pull request. <clears throat> and then you create another branch and then you do at least one unit test and then you do summarize the different MLS components because then you understand you know what to do as because you're going to be modeling now and then answer the following questions <clears throat> first is un perform keyword extraction uh, or modeling using one of your favorite whatever you understand easily it's either tf by div or keyword or yake or other similar algorithms <clears throat> you can click them these are links that I, you know, if you don't want to do that much research, you can just use exactly what is recommended here and whatever is easy for you. Once you have the keywords from each content and from each title, then you can do some similarity. How similar keywords in the headline title compared to keywords in the news body. So now, you know, like for example, for many of the news, you can compare by the title as well as also similarity in the keywords in the body of the, you know, the article. So then, you know, you do that. And another one, you do some topic modeling. So this is just basically, again, you can use these topics as your, like you basically model everything as part of these topics, or you can increase as well just by doing some, um, some uh, unsupervised learning. Each of the clusters, you can label them by whatever you want, but there should be something like that. They should make sense so that later when you compare, it's easier. Okay, so then that's topic modeling. And then the other one is the, probably the most difficult part of this challenge is uh, event modeling. Event modeling means, so by topic, you are actually like, if someone talks about, you know, Middle East or Russia or something, this is politics. You know, the topic is a very vague uh, part. While an event is actually, if someone is talking about uh, a cybersecurity crisis, it's about the event is just a cybersecurity about that, a particular event, you know? If there are five, five 50,000 articles, there may be, like, if there are, for example, if they are reporting about uh, 10,000 events, that means in average for one event, there are 10 articles, right? So that's what it means. Event is about what actually happens in the world. So you're trying to model events based on that. And there are many techniques. So this is where you're going to be really exploring and you're going to do really cutting edge science or cutting edge machine learning engineering um, and topic modeling or LLM, whatever, whatever you see it fit. Okay, so it is slightly complex, but it's also the most interesting part. So to do this, you are required to associate uh, or model the event that the articles are covering. Uh, for example, 500 of the news articles by 60 news media could be about the event of global disruption of, for example, a meta company app like Instagram. You know? So that's one event at that type. If there are even two of such events, one happens, let's say, in September, one happens in, in October, the two are different events. Even if it's about Instagram disruption, but the two events are different because they are separate by time. If actually a news report is reporting about the event that happens in september in october that's about the same event so you know like it's you're modeling an event um so there and discuss that learn you know it's the thinking should be clear and then also of course to do that cluster news article by events 
and then answer these questions. How many events are covered in the data? As I said, for example, is it 10,000 only events? We know that it's not, a, because so many of our tickers are about the same events. You know, if there are 50,000 50, uh, rows, the number of events could be just 5,000, 1,000, 10,000. I don't know how much, I don't know the answer. So, but you will answer how many events, analyze which news sites report events in their list. Now, once you group the event, who reported it first? Uh, you will be able to check by looking at the, the time, the time series, and then which events have the highest reporting. That means which event has the highest number of articles written about them. And then what is the correlation between new sites reporting events? So, you know, who reports per second? So the correlation between that. So this is basically that. Once you do that, of course, when you do that, you are modeling and changing for this, and you have to learn about uh, versioning and monitoring of your models. So try to think of how to use MLflow. This is a package um, for your model versioning and model monitoring. So these two are the key components. And task three and task four and task five are all about them. You know, then, OK, now do dashboards. You know, store the data. Build something so that you can host your model as well as also your data uh, properly. So for example, here, you have to have a post, you know, you have to create, create a Postgres SQL uh, such that you can store all of your, you know, whatever pre-processed, filtered, you know, new sentiments, whatever the features into your database. And the minimum essentials to do are, you have to create also your diagram, like you're basically like the schema, your database schema, and you should be able to just do that, load the data. In task four, you are building dashboard. Now you want to show all of the, EDA analysis, whatever you have seen, you want to expose it to the world so that the world can see and learn from your dashboard, right? So if you do it in Jupyter Hub, that's great. It's for you and for, a, for whoever you share it by email or by Slack. But if you want to open it to the public, then you have to do dashboard and therefore you will do at least a minimum in a, in a streamlit based dashboard. But what streamlit is behind it is a React. So you should create, if you want, you can learn a little bit also to, um, add some component yourself, streamlit component. The minimum essential to do are here. And then the deployment, again, you have to basically do, basically check uh, the deployment. Let's say you, you create a deploy, a, dip, uh, a dev or production branch for deployment. And whenever you push there, it checks something. So that's basically you do some CD and CI there, as well as also you just uh, have to do some dockerization and as well as just if you learn if you know how to do kubernetes you at least learn about it even if you don't do anything but you do on how to deploy your then dockerized component in a somewhere right now at least you learn something about it even if you don't do it okay so that's it so that those are the tasks and the deliver several clear, clear by end of today you should just basically give us the link to your repository and I, we hope that you created, of course, a task one or at least a minimum one branch there. And tomorrow, a one page summary of the project as you understand it, as well as also your GitHub link so that we can check your, your work in progress. And Wednesday, you summarize a report for task one. I think it's only task one. I don't think you do, but whatever you have done, summary report for task one and two, let's say, whatever you manage to do. But it's not, we don't expect that you do um, uh, everything in task one and task two by Wednesday. And, and basically on Thursday, three page report on insights and work done in the previous days. And on Friday, your link to deployed dashboard and final report and everything else um, you will report, okay? So that summarizes by end of Friday, you are done, okay? So again, other considerations as you go on, documentation, collaboration, communication, professionalism and time management, we really look and, and take into account. But a lot more, as I said, this is much more to give you the flavor of what we do. And it's gonna be stressful week, but it's also exciting week. There will be tutorials every day. And later this afternoon, there will be on them, on Python environment setup, as well as project planning. And day two, uh, you will have data science component building, architecture design, wireframe logic, as well as top modeling, topic modeling, sentiment analysis, time series analysis and ML engineering components. On day three, on Wednesday, with SQL as well as schema design, I think that we already just, um, and then day four is building dashboard using Streamlit, 
as well as also introduction to full stack programming using React and Python. And day five is if we have, we have to confirm introduction to cloud computing and terminologies, I'll be probably providing what another person. And then also if we have another one um, um, tutorial, we have to confirm on Kubernetes serverless and distributed Docker-based deployment. Again, again, these are, you know, you, we know it's one week, you don't do a lot, but try your best to, to do as much as you can. And the leaderboard will be published by Wednesday and Friday. And here are references. And this is, for example, you, you can see something like what you're doing now. Somebody has recently published it in Nature paper. Nature is considered the top academic paper, but just exactly what you're going to do, it is by coincidence. It's just only I added it now, actually. But, you know, there are people, the, the, the thing you do is exciting in itself. So it's still publishable if you do it well. So it's not uh, like that. So, and and some of the, re the references here. Okay, let me stop here. And if there are any quick questions, um, please raise your hand. Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, let me start from the end. Bafikadu, yes, I think in principle you can, absolutely, but the more you follow the structure, easier for you because in any way you have to understand data before you do anything. But yeah, it's, I would say, logically you will do the way we described it. But if you do task two early, you know, I mean, it is not a problem except that you would be very much wasting your time because without their understanding to do some modeling is very much a waste of time. But for us, the most important part is you do as much as you can. But if you do it in parallel, task one, task two in day one, or task three, whatever, in day one, report writing the report today, it's fine. Like it's not, that, that part is fine. But follow logical order such that, you know, data understanding almost always comes first. Project understanding comes first, on top of everything, their understanding second, and then everything else as you see fit. Hope that answers. So there was a hand. Please raise your hand if you have a question. And then, um, Jonas, uh, okay, I, um, I'm not sure, can we focus things that are not on the dock? I mean, if you want, if you have time to add, as, as I say, that's the minimum essential to do. Anything that you see it fit, Please. Um, yeah. Okay. And then uh, Abu Bakr. Uh, okay. So the tasks will be submitting or are will be on Tenex platform, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You will be communicated, but exactly everything in the Tenex, everything you will be submitting is in Tenex platform, including the challenge document. You will find it in the challenge in the Tenex platform. You know. It's for our convenience we put it here, but the Tenex platform has everything, including the grading happens there, the feedback you'll receive in Tenex platform. Every basically operation happens in Tenex, except the communication happens in Slack and the uh, video meet will happen in Gmeet. But all of that data again goes back to the Tenex platform. So your tutorial performance as well as your like your Slack performance, sharing contents or you know activity, as well as your Gmeet attendance and everything will go. So the data is collected and analyzed and kind of you know put in the Tenex platform. So Tenex has all the data. Yes. Um, okay. So does that answer Abu Bakr? If so, then your Johannes or Jonas, you have raised also your hand. You can go on. So Ali, I think now you got the answer. It is the all of the submissions are in Tenex. Bef Kadu uh, submitting the tasks, yes. And Ahmed, I oh, think okay. that like sorry, Johannes, go on. Uh, you're like mostly reading out the when you were explaining. So if you can just explain the things there that are not well written and stuff that would be best which one i didn't understand i didn't get it sorry 
I didn't get it. So which part should I explain? No, the whole the whole lecture, like you were reading out the document for us. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes, so this is everything you need to do. Yeah, sure. So there is nothing else. So this describes the entire week. So in principle, from the technical side, there is no other document that you need to consult. From the technical side, the challenge document is basically has everything you need to require. So there is nothing else from the technical side. There will be the same thing similar for the non technical or for the careers team, but that's it. But from technical side, know that whatever you have, just ask and, you know, just this document describes everything you need to do, nothing more. Hope that makes it clear. Okay, so yes, yes. So Ahmed, um, I think if you finish anything, you can proceed to the next one. There is no order of day one. This is much more structured. As we said, if you're super human and finish it today, everything, you know, glad we will be glad. There is nothing holding you, but just make sure to understand what is being requested. Uh, Attendance, I mean, Beck uh, G asked about attendance. I mean, basically, we, just like any job, like, of course, we, we want to know who is responsive. You know, it's not just only technically competent, but also socially competent, that, that someone actually is putting time and understanding in, in the community. So if you are in, the, in a job, for example, that you would have to go to either to the office or you'd have to attend a virtual meeting, right? So you can't just do something and submit something, you know, that's not gonna happen. So that, in that sense, it's attendance, but it's much more to say, it is to structure as well. It's like, there will be, if you don't, if you, uh, because power is off or internet is not there, if you don't attend, if you write us, that's fine. But just make sure you are a good communicator of your situations, such that, you know, you are more professional. So. I, you know, we are the competency measures we have includes professionalism as one. So if you are not professional, if we don't think you're so not responsive to be professional, then even if technically you're good, we're not gonna accept you because as, I, as we said, it's not about us, it's about the job. If we don't, if we don't think you will be placed globally, we don't, you know, that, that's our main criteria. So just, I hope that is clear. It's not about attendance, it's not a class, it's much more of like professionalism. Uh, does the document have everything that's to be done for the week? Yes, Tamaskan. And I hope that is clear for everyone. Kumi, uh, right now, there's nothing regarding the challenge on 10X. It will come uh, exactly later in the, every, every day around, I think, um, 7 p.m. or like um, around 3 p.m. UTC, there will be the submission will open. So you will then submit from that on. So they will be just that. And then Anthony, currently the, plan, the platform is blank. Yes, but it will be soon the same as I said. Okay, any other question? Raise your hand, ask any question if you want. We are over time, so I will just only give two, or two chances for everyone if they have question. If not, I assume it's clear. If not clear, please ask it in the Slack and just make, make sure that you understand really well the challenge be because if you understand it well then it gets super simple to do it if you don't understand it if you are confused it's very hard it's already hard so if you don't understand it's going to be very super hard so okay any question not therefore great and happy um coding thinking talking discussing and I'm sure, you know, I will tell you, you would think now, wow, that's too much. And it's like, okay, this is, I'm not gonna. And then on Friday, you will be like, wow, you know, like, look how much I have done. It's incredible. You will be so happy on Friday. Probably you will be so worried and overwhelmed today. But on Friday, by the end of it, you know, was worse the, the week and you would, um, you would enjoy it. So persist. Okay, so then we'll stop here. Thank you, everyone.